So welcome everyone again to today's webinar on how to succeed selling in Whole Foods. One thing that I love is that the routes to market for food and beverage brands have really expanded over the last few years, but retailers like Whole Foods have remained one of the core entry points into getting your product into the natural channel and growing. They're still considered one of the best national you know, tastemakers to identify what products are are going to be big, uh, but it's not always easy to first get into Whole Foods and know what to do to prepare. And then once you do, what do you need to be successful once you're in the door so that you can actually grow and make money? For this conversation, I've invited on James Pippin and Beth Young from Good Now Foods. They work with uh, tons of brands selling into Whole Foods and supporting them once they are in Whole Foods as well um, as a sales agency. And so they're talking to Whole Foods Probably what James like every week, if not every day. So when I <laughs> yep, <laughs> absolutely. And so they know all these questions. In fact, James was just telling me he's like, "Hey, we, he just reached out to a couple Whole Foods team members to get the latest answers on on some questions as well." So it's going to be super valuable. Uh, but again, I want to make sure that you are getting the most out of this as well. And so, like I mentioned, feel free to um, ask questions throughout. So with that, James, I'd love for you to take over and just give a quick intro, and then we'll kind of jump into the conversation. Great. Yeah, thanks uh, so much for having us here, Jordan. Uh, really happy to join this, this awesome group of people. We're happy to share what we can today uh, about Whole Foods and our knowledge of the, the market there, but certainly the invitation goes beyond this. So if we don't get to something today, uh, Jordan can can put you in touch with us and we're happy to answer more questions afterwards too. So this is this is gonna be a start, uh, but Whole Foods is a big topic. It's a big retailer. Uh, we've worked with them for a long, long time. They're probably our largest account uh, at Good Now Foods. Uh, I'm the founder of Good Now Foods. Uh, we started our sales agency about seven years ago and uh, really based around organic, natural products. So Whole Foods is clearly a top fit uh, for a lot of the brands that we work with. Um, I'm joined here with Beth, by Beth Young uh, here today. Beth's uh, one of our key lieutenants. She runs a couple regions of uh, regional accounts for us. Uh, Beth also runs Whole Foods with me. Uh, she's a former uh, store level team lead and buyer uh, in Whole Foods as well. So she's seen it from the inside out. Um, which has been absolutely useful for us uh, in lots of ways as we've sought to, to grow our brands there. So um, I, we have a few slides to share. Shall I just jump into this, Jordan, or did you have any other questions or comments before we do? Yeah, no, jump into it. One thing I'll just say for those listening, we're going to talk about both the things you need to do to get into Whole Foods now. And then also we're going to be covering um, in the presentation if you're currently selling in Whole Foods, ways that you can develop your relationship further and expand to other regions, if that's what you're looking for. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's it's a great point because um, to think about this like this, so many people think about just getting onto the shelf as being the hard thing, and it is. It's not easy, especially with an account like Whole Foods, where less than 5% of all the submissions that they get actually get approved and get on shelf. Um, but it's almost harder to stay on shelf and, and profit and be successful uh, because it's such a competitive space. And so we'll, we'll go into both those things today because they, they really both matter. You don't really make money until your products are selling. And um, so that's obviously a critical part of the question. Um, so just, just briefly about us, just so you get a sense of our background and how we've navigated this. Um, we have really four business entities. Um, our sales agency has been the core uh, lead for Whole Foods business over the years. So we've got a team of about 25 people, uh, full-time, some more part-time, uh, who call on key accounts all over the country, natural, organic, uh, all across the store, everything from supplements to food to beverage. You know, we have a potting soil. We have, uh, we've done everything from cricket powder to, uh, <laughs> to specialty flour and rice and beans and good old-fashioned uh, stuff like that. So uh, we also have a nationwide demo program. Uh, we do demos all over the country. Whole Foods has actually given us approval to do demos for our brands without being a W-2 uh, employee in lots of regions, just because we we operate kind of like a, uh, a true sales partner in the sense that we're part of your sales team. Uh, we have an inside sales group that calls out to independent stores, not really relevant for today's conversation, but we also have a tool called Harvest Hub, uh, which is which is a neat way for people who don't necessarily want to pay a sales agency or a broker uh, to, to work on their products, but they want to have access to the contacts and information that a company like ours does. 
uh, that's what Harvest Hub uh, is. And Food Bevy uh, customers have a special rate. Uh, it's a discounted rate. You can't get it through our normal um, channels. Uh, just as a as a thank you uh, for you being part of the community, and uh, because we're very dedicated to helping emerging brands have this sort of access. Um, so that's a little bit about who we are. We do have uh, probably 75% of our brands in our agency active in Whole Foods in one way or another. We have global brands, we have local brands, regional brands. We have a number of the exclusive uh, brands contracts. So if you're buying flour or beans, or we just won two more SKUs of rock certified lentils uh, under the 365 Whole Foods banner. Um, so we work quite a bit with their exclusive brands team as well as their branded side. And one of the things we'll talk about today is how those two sides interact with each other during the review process. Um, so just to like set the stage for talking about Whole Foods, those of you who are active in Whole Foods probably know some of this, uh, it has changed a ton. So even if you know somebody or you activated in Whole Foods two or three or four or five years ago, it's completely different now. So it's, it's a whole different company, uh, especially since Amazon took over, but really in the past two years, everything has changed. And that means everything in terms of how they review off cycle, how they look at new items, uh, the timelines for these processes, the margins that they're looking for, uh, all of that stuff is, is really quite different. So um, I bring this up just because people have lots of memories of Whole Foods, uh, like I do, of going in and being able to sell into a single store and the store manager being able to say, oh, this is cool, let's try out your product, will you do some demos for me? That used to be the case. Um, I remember, in fact, in, uh, 2019 or so, we did a custom mustard project with just one region of Whole Foods and they had a whole tasting panel and it was, they wanted a hatch chili mustard made. And so we made different varietals and we sent them down and they rated based on their tasting notes. And we produced a custom little seasonal mustard just for one level of Whole Foods. So there was huge interaction on their part with brands and, and working with us in that case to, to develop something that was truly just an in and out program for one region. So all that has changed now. They they have, I think, you know, let go of a lot of people over the years. There's just fewer buyers working on these accounts. So the expectations you have to have from a time standpoint of working with them, in my opinion, over the past year or two is totally different than what it was before. So just setting context around what engagement with Whole Foods is going to feel like now versus, you know, what you might see in the past. Um, so then let's talk about how we work with Whole Foods. Um, there's really four ways uh, that we do currently. And by the way, I don't have all the answers. You know, nobody has the magic uh, crystal ball for every perfect way. So I certainly welcome people sharing their experiences and thoughts. Um, we love to learn just as much as we love to share what we know. Uh, so I just wanna preface this by saying, you know, we're not magic. Nobody's magic in this industry. This is just us doing our best to stay up with all these changes and be successful as they happen. So by all means, if you know something more or different, uh, we certainly welcome you sharing that. Um, but the ways that we've worked with, with Whole Foods recently, um, certainly the Forager team is still active. Uh, it used to be even as much as six months or a year ago that foragers were still uh, placing products into regions under 50%. Uh, if it was under 50% of the store in the region, even the regions have changed now. There's now six regions, there used to be 11. Um, the forager team is still very active. Um, we know these people very well. In fact, there's some of the, the folks that I reached out to prior to this call to get some of the latest metrics on how they're looking at brands for expansion. Um, but they're the people that I would start with. If you're not in Whole Foods yet, if you are in the grocery, if you are in the, uh, there's some sections that the foragers don't work with, namely bakery uh, and deli uh, to a large degree. But if you're in any of the other areas and some some Hava, I believe too, they're not as involved with. But if you're in like the center store grocery, certainly um, you wanna interact with your forager first. These are the, their, their whole mission is to find brands in their area. And that's kind of also being blurred now where foragers can work outside of their area. Now, they have a lot to do already. So when I was talking with Grant Daisley at Newtopia a week and a half ago, I was like, hey, Casey, uh, Casey's the director of the Forger Group. Casey said, you're covering Idaho now. And he kind of looked at me like, is that so? Okay. Um, so uh, 
James, on foragers, yeah. they used to be called local foragers, and specifically, you had to have products from, like, within their region, right. or it had to be, like, manufactured in their region, right? I know for a That's lot of right. things, they, like, co-packed in another region, but maybe they lived in the Midwest. Um, is that still the case, where it's, like, has to be manufactured, produced locally, or foragers looks looking able just to cover the region without the local element? You know, what they've told me in the past couple months, and it's a good question, is that they now have authority to find brands anywhere uh, as long as it's an emerging brand. Now, all that said, you know, Grant's got a lot on his plate doing Washington and Oregon and part of Canada. So, you know, if he meets your brand somewhere at a show and you're from Illinois, that's great. He might just tell Margie, who's the uh, Midwest local uh, team lead uh, or local forger, excuse me, uh, you know, hey, I saw this cool brand, it's in your area, you might want to look at it, or Darcy, or, you know, whoever it is. But my understanding is now they're not bound by geographic restriction, but in all practicality, just to be able to do their job well with all the different brands that they see and encounter, they're still sort of operating within that, um, more or less. Um, but you definitely connect with them. They're going to do you the favor of looking at your product. They're going to say, hey, you know, this is a non-alcoholic mocktail made with cordyceps. Cordyceps in this category is kind of like not approved yet. You might want to think about doing something different if you want to get in. Or they'll look, if you have a claim on your packaging that says non-GMO, but you don't have the project non-GMO verification, the forgers are going to be the first ones to say, hey, just so you know, you're going to have to address that before we're going to be able to get your product through the process. Um, they also work directly with the category merchants in each category in global. So these are the, the global buyers down in Austin, uh, principally, although some of them live in other regions, um, who are the ultimate decision maker. So right now, category reviews, global, it, that's where all the decisions really happen. So the local foragers are escalating up brands to the category merchants right now. They're not independently placing them into regions. That said, they're still great champions. Uh, they advocate, uh, they help the category merchants at Global make decisions for the regions, and um, it's really good to start your process with them. Uh, so the LEAP program, this is another way that um, you're, you're going to really struggle to get approved for it just because I think this year there were like 1,800, 2,000 applicants. There were 10 approved. Some brands got through into the final round, but didn't get approved. The great thing about Leap is that even if you don't get approved, it's a direct communication to your buyer. The buyers read every one of these submissions. So you have to think about this as another opportunity that you have to have a direct communication, even though, again, it's through a, a written submission. Um, but having met with their whole Leap crew uh, down at Expo West, we do a booth share um, for our brands at these trade shows. So we have a bunch, you know, this year we have 120 feet at uh, Expo West in the Hot Products Pavilion bought out. So our brands pay a fraction of the cost to, to attend and be there. We had Whole Foods literally come through and talk to all the brands, including the Leap team. Um, and they basically said, spend your time on the five or six or seven questions in here that are free form question answers about your brand. So Literally, the buyers will read every one of them. The local foragers read every one of them that are pertinent to them. So this is direct communication to the buyer. So even if you don't get approved, this is just another chance for you to talk about your brand direct to the Whole Foods team. Um, so these are the four areas that I think you can really engage with Whole Foods on. Obviously, the category review process is an important one, whether you're looking to get expansion or you're looking to get in in the first place. And we'll kind of dive into that in a little bit more detail. But I definitely recommend events too. This is your time to meet with Whole Foods folks in person. Uh, we had probably, I don't know, 15 of the global buyers uh, and local foragers at our booth, for example, at Newtopia Now. We had um, 10 of our brands exhibiting there with us and every one of them got to talk with the Whole Foods team. Uh, so it's it's the events are a great time. Uh, it's, it's a relaxed setting. Newtopia was nice because it was a little smaller, so it wasn't as rushed as like Expo West or some of the other big events. But I definitely recommend um, events if you think you're going to be able to get the Whole Foods team uh, to your booth because this is a time to talk one-on-one. -on -one. Um, James, I'm curious, is, are you have a sense of what attributes Whole Foods or different categories are looking for in products? I know like local used to be big, kind of original brands. Are they kind of yeah. focused on like unique ingredients? Or are they doing a lot with like functional adaptogenic products or are they steered away from it? It's like non-GMO, not required, but almost necessary. Do you have a sense of kind of like what they're looking for? 
Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing they're looking for right now uh, is rock certification. So regenerative organic certification. That is the sole type of product that I've had 10 or 12 of their buyers tell me that they will work off cycle on. So outside of that category review process for everybody, but rock certification, regenerative organic, if you could get it, uh, Whole Foods and Sprouts, uh, by the way, are both... Um, are both massively interested in products with those certifications. Um, Non-GMO certification used to be kind of a minimum bar for Whole Foods. If there was a GMO risk uh, in your product, there are some products that are squeaking through without it, but you just can't have a claim uh, on the packaging without the certification. And outside of that, I think, you know, to be honest, uh, I think it's margin driven. I think, you know, they are mm -hmm. looking for innovation. You know, I had um, Patrick Wyman shot me a note this morning ahead of our call and he said, you know, one of the big things that we're looking for, obviously, in each category is something with innovation. Uh, so, so certainly, you know, if, if every other product in your category is using nootropics or functional mushrooms or adaptogens, you know, it, it's, it's hard to say that that's innovation. Uh, but if you're doing it in a new way, or if you're, if you're doing something, um, that is truly category, you know, like we have a, we have a great popcorn brand in our portfolio that uses ghee instead of butter, right? So the, there's all sorts of benefits to that, including lower calories. There's some other, um, other functional benefits from it, but you know, that's different. There's nobody else using ghee as the, the butter uh, uh, on uh, ready to eat popcorn. Um, so I think that's probably certainly innovation as part of what they're looking for, but, but honestly also margin. Like if you can have, if you can have a better margin than the other products in your category, and if you can have better velocity than other products in your category, those are going to be top decision factors, especially for expansion. Awesome. Yeah. So I won't spend too much time on this um, just because, um, you know, it's it's not the, the key thing, but just kind of knowing the people in there, category merchants work with exclusive brands merchants, for example, on every category review. So when your category is up, they're talking with the exclusive brands team to see what products exclusive brands is bringing in versus branded. So you're not just competing against branded products, you're competing against what Whole Foods might do from an exclusive brand standpoint. The foragers feed into that decision-making loop. So they will have a meeting with each category merchant for, um, for their review cycle, and they will talk about brands in the category for their local region that they want to uh, escalate up. Uh, and then the sourcing and innovation QA teams weigh in because they're going to be looking for the no-no ingredients, the banned ingredients, uh, stuff that they don't have a policy for, you know, stuff like, I think allulose is one of those that we're, we're kind of waiting for Whole Foods to come around on. Uh, cordyceps as a functional ingredient, it, they have cordyceps powder, but you can't have cordyceps in your beverage. So stuff like that, uh, QA is going to weigh in on. Obviously, the executive team has some sway uh, in all of this. Um, I always caution people about going the executive route. If you know people in the executive suite of Whole Foods, it can be a plus. It can also be a minus. Lots of buyers don't necessarily like their boss or their boss's boss coming down and telling them what they, what they should do. Some do. And it's so it's it's a guessing game with that. Uh, and then finally, distribution. I think this is this is probably one of the big things to cover is, you know, what's your best distribution route into Whole Foods? And that's very much a personal answer, in my opinion. Uh, UNFI is their nationwide distributor. As most of you know, it's an 8% margin uh, that UNFI adds. They have regional distributors for all different categories in all the regions. So you can work with former DPI. Now, okay, he's still operating in Pacific Northwest. You can work with Fortune Fish in the Midwest. You can work with, you know, uh, folks, Renaissance in Northern California. There are solutions uh, for regional players in each of the regions. Um, so it's just really a, a question as to whether whether you're comfortable working with the UNFI or, or not. James, questions came up from Tim. When you say Whole Foods is focused on margin, is that a dollar margin or is it a lot yeah. is it a percentage? It's a percentage. So um, I would say you know, kind of the common ways you can get tripped up trying to get into Whole Foods if your margin is too low is a big one. Um, you, as a grocery item, you have virtually no chance of getting in under 40% margin uh, to Whole Foods. We are seeing, uh, and if, if you're active in Whole Foods already, uh, if you're like every single one of our brands who's active, we have about 55 brands that we represent currently, probably 35 of those are active in Whole Foods. Um, every single one of them 
has seen a mysterious cost increase uh, on their product on shelf in the past year or two. And, you know, then you fight with the category merchant a little bit to get it reduced down. This is again with no inputs on our side. Uh, and, and what we're seeing is that in center store, now they're looking for more like 45% and in some categories, 50% margin. Um, so that's clearly an increase on their side. It's happening without any inputs on the supplier side or the distribution side. In other categories, HABA, 50% baseline, 55%, 60% is is also seen. So Wow. Eric, yeah, Eric just has, do you happen to work with any like supplement companies and have an idea of what that margin is? Yeah, 50% plus. Um, okay. So that's that's your that's your baseline. And um, not to say that it never happens that things come in under that, but I see a lot of brands um, not, not, you know, like there are so many cool and unique products, right? And you should believe in your product. You should be passionate about it. You should be confident about it. Um, but yet, you know, there are so many options out there that it's very, even if your product is the most amazing, most innovative coolest thing ever uh if your margin is too low it's it's probably not gonna it's probably not gonna happen um not to say it will never will but but that's that's a big one good questions uh, i'm happy to pause if there's some more no nope, we're good right now and keep going okay okay great well so let's talk about then the submission process and like best practices there so you know Obviously, anybody can fill out an Excel sheet and send it in, right? So then, how do you differentiate yourself? How do you how do you stand out with the Whole Foods team when they're trying to funnel people toward this process? So, um, some of the things that we as a company do differently, and again, we don't own the all the knowledge on all the right ways to enter Whole Foods. There's lots of right people out there, and I I welcome other ideas. We're always trying to to improve on our process, but. Right now, this year, the things that we're doing differently, we're starting our outreach typically about three or four months before the submission deadline. So on the Whole Foods portal, um, there is a, you can find the category reviews uh, for all the categories. So this is the new supplier portal, it literally just came out a couple days ago. Um, basically on here, you can find for all of your, you know, whether you're in, um, a center store item, whether you are a uh, Haba item, whether you, I don't think there's a bakery category review. There is a specialty uh, category review calendar. Um, you can find that on here uh, in the, uh, here we go, product categories section. You can also see it on the submit items section. Uh, so category review calendar, you can down, click download, that'll take you over to the different category review calendars so you can pick one out. Um, and this is where the online submission takes place. So if you're specialty foods, you know, if you're a cheese brand, you can you can start that here. If you're a supplement or a whole body brand, you can start that over here. There's different standards, there's different requirements um, for each of these sections. I think the only one that's not active on here is bakery. Uh, an another one of the big changes that Whole Foods has done over the past couple of years, there used to be regional buyers for specialty, for bakery. Those have all been consolidated in global buyers in the global uh, group, and they're responsible for different categories, not for different regions. So if you're a bakery brand, you have to reach out to them directly. Um, and, and I'm certainly happy to dive into specifics with anybody after the, the call is over and, and help answer other questions. But um, but this is what it looks like. So you should get signed up on here either way. Um, there are lots of resources. There's information about, you know, quality standards, about um, some of their other programs. So if you want to learn more about LEAP or their foundation or how to do, um, you know, promotions within Whole Foods, all that stuff is in here. Um, but ahead of this submission date, um, and maybe Beth, do you want to pull up the category review calendar and, and you can walk through, through the, through the uh, specifics of that. Um, but before that submission date, we want to get your information, your Excel, your PowerPoint that you fill out. We want to get that in the hands of your local forager for sure, so they can look through it, so they can help us address things that are going to trip us up down the road, help us find pitfalls. If you've got a good relationship with your local forager, they will do that for you. Um, and we want to do that three or four months ahead of time um, because waiting for that submission deadline this year is proving to be the kiss of death for some brands because this year, by the time that rolls around, 
they've already decided which brands they want to review in their category review process. Um, so you got to start, you got to start early. Um, and maybe Beth, I'll turn it over to you to, to pull up that category review calendar. if you like. I also put in the link um, into the chat on how to get signed up. It's kind of interesting that the domain is actually an Amazon domain, not a Whole Foods domain. Yeah, the takeover continues. <laughs> hi, yeah, thanks, James. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, so yeah, um, definitely. Um, so this, with the new portal, there. so there is, if anyone's on the supplier portal, the old portal is still active. But again, this is a new rollout. Um, so you can still download the category review calendars. Um, this is that's something that does change as well. So I would always, you know, be mindful to go in and download um, just to make sure that you have the most current information. Um, this is going to be what the category review calendar looks like when you're downloading. Um, and they they have it set up pretty well as far as to to see what's going on um, when your category is. So new item submissions do, again, as James said, um, two to three months beforehand, just start introducing yourself to, um, to the person that's reviewing, sell, uh, share a sell sheet. Um, you can also share your PowerPoint and Excel file if you'd like, but just getting your brand um, introduced uh, before these new items um, are deadlines are due. So, oh, excuse me. Um, so back to, so this is, so you can see all the dates. They'll actually show you when the meetings are ending, when their, their uh, reviews are ending. Um, when they'll start to reach out um, to publish the assortment that's going to be approved. Um, and then they'll also show where the product is supposed to be landing and landing on shelf. Now, as we all know, these dates are subject to change. Uh, everyone's always behind. But again, just as a general idea and just so that you can be aware of what's going on. And then you also have seasonal. But again, for and um, on the supplier portal, for whatever department you're in, they'll have. So they'll have a specialty category review calendar. They'll have a HABA. Um, they'll have a seasonal as well. So uh, just be knowledgeable of that. Um, and maybe just to, the, maybe just yeah. to jump in on one, sorry to interrupt Beth, but one, yeah. just to jump in on that, on that category review calendar, in addition to like reaching out to the category merchants and the local folks two or three months out, send it in a sell sheet, ask if they'd like to see some samples and then ask to be invited to the supplier call. So one thing that they're doing differently this year for most of the categories is they're having a supplier call, uh, typically about two weeks ahead of this due date, two weeks to four weeks ahead of this uh, uh, date. They're gonna share information about what they're looking for um, this year in the category. So that's also part of the reason you gotta start early is they're not publishing this. <laughs> the first round this year, we found out the hard way that they had changed their process and we had to beg and plead to be added to the supplier call um, last minute because we were still operating under last year's policy of this this deadline being kind of like the deadline for when you have to have stuff in this year it's really two three months ahead of that uh, but reach out invite samples ask to be part of the supplier call so that when this deadline hits and you've got your documents in probably two weeks ahead of it just to be on the safe side um, you're you're part of all that pre-discussion so yeah what's interesting too I was just looking at the gates I'm guessing like that T minus 34 is like 34 weeks before the product's yeah. going to be on the shelf. Just to think about, right, like this stuff is happening really far in advance. Yeah. Um, so make sure you're like well ahead of things. As you mentioned, like submit before then so you can get on the category, the, the supplier call to even get this process going. Right. And, and I think, Jordan, like that whole point that you just made, it kind of like one of the things to think about with any brand is as much as Whole Foods is a cool account, as much as it is a big account in the natural space, as much as it can be a high driving revenue and, and sometimes profit account uh, for you, there are so many other accounts out there that move quicker. Um, so we as an agency, you know, obviously our, our brand partners are always like, hey, get us into Whole Foods, get us into Whole Foods. And, you know, it's a lot of it is I've even had Grant uh, Daisley, the local forger up here near me in Seattle, tell me you've got to tell your brands to be patient our process is long we don't we don't have we don't move on a dime anymore and that's really true you really have to plan you know if everything is goes perfect and you're lucky and the first time that you submit in you get approved which doesn't usually happen you know we're still talking about you know a june 13th submission deadline turns into what is that round 2 so that's february of next year so we're still you know, right now we're submitting for brands, um, you know, that are that are going to be set up in the summer of next year. And that's if every if you're lucky, you know, and not every account or category is reviewed every year. A lot of them are reviewed every two years now instead of every year or every six months like it used to be. So just 
you gotta you gotta look at the timeline because there's there's not a lot we or anybody can do to to change that. So as you see, um, when your deadline is and doing all that reach out, so you'll definitely, so as this, and definitely prepare, even if you know that your submissions are not going to be due until the end of the year, just getting them ready and 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 tweaked and, and perfect for, because they, there's a lot of information that they require that if it's incorrect, um, they will most likely just dismiss it. So um, they do on all, so once you download the new item form, so there's an Excel form and then there's a, the PowerPoint where you share pictures of your product. So the Excel form and on both of these slides, um, they will, they in, in a big uh, orange, please read doc is your UPCs need to be correct. Um, <laughs> so just making sure that all of that information is correct. Um, it, it is something that if you are, and, and it's happened, um, I mean, in, in, so just making sure all of that information is correct. So we're going to go ahead and delete that. We know that that's what, what they're looking for. Um, and then just going through the slide, um, I mean, pretty self-explanatory, but the big thing is, is just making sure like your family is correct. Um, for example, um, functional beverages land under dairy. So that's one thing is just making sure when you're going through your family and your category, you're going to want to make sure you're just really paying attention to things like that and that you have it correct. Um, we've had a brand in the past where they actually put it under sparkling water, under grocery. And so it was something that we had to make sure that we fixed and sent and submitted uh, correctly. Um, so all of those things um, going through this will actually kind of outline. It's this. It's pretty much the same on the PowerPoint as well, but spelling it out. But your cost to Whole Foods, um, again, it's going to be that cost plus 8%. Um, and it does up kind of the math for you here as well. So when you put in your case costs, um, it's going to do the, the factoring and it's going to show you what your margin is going to be. Um, and that, just, a, just a note on that too, that maximum delivered case cost to distributor, you have to give them a landed cost into a distributor uh, on this form. So you, you might not sell to them. You might not deliver to the distributor. The distributor might pick up from you, but you have to put into this form what it's going to, what the distributor is going to receive product in at their location. So just, just one thing to note there, you might not be actually doing that, but you have to estimate as though you are, and that, that is a number they will hold you to. Yes. Yeah, definitely. And maximum and, and make sure we're, we're yeah, putting that. Thanks, James. Um, and then you're going through your codes as well. Um, and again, standard for your products, uh, if you have certifications there, um, and then the dimensions of your units, the pallets, um, things like that, and then your contact information as well. So, um, and again, because when they do schematics, they are going to be planning based on the unit size, they're gonna actually be plugging these onto shelf and they're gonna use the dimensions. So just making sure all of that information is correct so that when they're making that plan, um, it's going to be correct for when they place it on shelf. And maybe a this? couple yeah. things to note, uh, if you scroll back to the promotional section, so the, I think Beth highlighted it well, like the margin is, the margin is obviously a key thing, getting your information correct. These two columns, AF and AG, um, you can just, you can write in whatever you want here. And I will be honest, we've, we have never had Whole Foods come back to us and say, hey, you put in that you were going to do a thousand demos and we haven't seen you do any demos. Not to say that you should like fudge that number, but just an observation that's of, I mean, I, I, for some reason, they don't tie this back to anything. I shouldn't say that. We have never seen them in our agency tie this back to a requirement post launch. Some buyers might do it. Um, I'm just saying we haven't observed that before. So that to me, means I don't know how much, how heavily they weight this, but I, I do think it's important to to put in what you think you will do. If you are going to do a lot of demos, make a note of it for sure. Um, but just know, I, I don't think we've ever had them, you know, say, hey, you said you'd do a hundred demos and you only did 80. We've never had that sort of tie back here. James and Beth, are there promotions that Whole Foods is prioritizing right now? So you can put those in because that's what they're looking to for brands yeah. to do? So I can tell you, um, from speaking with several buyers that from a promotional standpoint, just for context, the minimum promotion you can do is 15%. Uh, and that's, you can run that as a scan, which is what I would recommend a scan deal, meaning that when the item scans through the register, you get billed back for that one item. So it's not based on how much the store buys. It's not like an OI, a distributor can buy a ton of stuff under OI doesn't necessarily get passed down to shelf. Um, scan is best because that, that you know, the customer at the end of the day is getting the discount. 
and that's what you want. So 15% minimum on all promotions, you have to offer 10% prime affinity. So if, whenever you run a 15% promotion with anybody who's shopping at Whole Foods, who's an Amazon prime customer, you're automatically doing another 10% on top of that. So now you're at 25%. On top of that, Whole Foods has just recently announced that all store employees get an additional 20% off, which is also, you guessed it, funded by the brand. So that's another 20% on top of that. So that starts to add up real quickly. What, what I will tell you is from a performance standpoint, Whole Foods has told us that above 19% off on shelf, they see an exponential increase in velocity. So, you know... I mean, from an intuitive level, sure, that makes sense. The higher the promotion, the more sales you get, but it's not linear. Above 19%, they're seeing a real drive up. So with Whole Foods, because you're competing for space on shelf, you know, if you're a new brand in, you're competing to stay there. If you're an existing brand looking for expansion, the biggest way that they measure expansion potential is your velocity of units per store sold versus your competing products. So it's it's you are being evaluated directly against uh, against your competing products and velocity is by far the biggest metric that they're using. So what does that mean from a promotional sports standpoint? It means that the more promotions you're running, especially if they're above 19%, um, are gonna drive higher velocity. And then it becomes a question of how much can you support? Um, and that's that's different for every, every product every margin um but i would say at a minimum if you're going into whole foods you need to be thinking about quarterly promotions they run two promotions a month an a a period and a b period you have to request to be a promotion uh to have a promotion run they will deny requests you're technically not allowed to do an a and a b in the same month um and as you if you're in one region uh, they're waiving the promotional fees, but they have introduced substantial promotional fees if you're a multi-region brand. So again, this gets also into like expansion planning, like what can you support? You know, if you have to run six or eight two-week promotions a year and your fee because you're a tier three uh, brand, I'm, I can't remember the exact numbers, but, but basically you might be paying $7,000 for the privilege of running that two-week promotion, which will also have higher uh, promotional costs due to the prime affinity and the store employee amounts. So you can see it, it adds up. So to be in Whole Foods, it's, you, have to be, you have to be looking at all of those costs all the way through and, and, and feel comfortable with it. Because again, if you're not running these promotions and your velocity is lower than your competing brands, you're gonna get kicked off shelf. James and Beth, I think this might be a good time to transition into, you know, for a lot of our friends watching who are currently selling in the Whole Foods, you know, I'm guessing there's probably two cases, right? There's brands who are just starting out. Maybe they're not quite hitting the velocity metrics that that brands are looking for, and they're trying to find, figure out like, what do I need to do to make sure I'm renewed for another year? Yeah. As opposed to like actively looking to kick people off, how are they thinking about velocity minimums and, and selling? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the number one, um, the number one thing that. Uh, and I, I can read this from a note I got from Patrick Wyman this morning. Uh, the number one thing that they are evaluating on is units per store per week sales. And um, to, a, to a lower extent, he said um, revenue uh, per store sales. Uh, and then he said, we combine that with an evaluation of the differentiation from other offerings in a category. Uh, and these are the, the absolute key metrics we use to gauge fitness for expansion. So really you're getting a you're getting a if you're on shelf with Whole Foods, the number one thing to watch is your velocity, your unit velocity. And Whole Foods isn't going back and saying, oh, this brand did a hundred demos to achieve, you know, this 2x improvement on velocity versus this other brand that didn't do any demos. They're not going back and evaluating it like that. They're just looking at the velocity numbers. So anything that you can do to drive up your velocity. Uh, is is gold in terms of expansion potential. And this is one of the things that makes it kind of valuable in some ways to start off regionally with Whole Foods rather than you know, in one region or in 30 stores or 40 stores or even 20 stores. You know, we start off some of our Midwest brands and, and Rocky Mountain brands and a couple stores in Montana. And it's great because we can just demo the heck out of the products. We can run a promotion in two stores and all of a sudden our velocity numbers versus some of the 
the core national brands that have to spend their money across all 500 plus stores, just a completely different story. So units per store per week uh, is the top metric. Uh, and again, you're, you're not being measured based on your spend from a promotional and demo standpoint to hit that number. It's just truly a units per store per week um, comparison versus other brands in your category, combined with the contextual evaluation of, is this an innovative product that we want to have that's differentiated uh, in some way? Awesome. That's super great. helpful. Um, one thing that actually just came up, are there any data tools that that you've seen that help brands understand kind of what those benchmarks are for their category? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> Excuse me. I would say... Um, well, first and foremost, if you're not on the um, on the former vendor reporting portal, now Whole Foods' is new uh, Velocity tool to see your own performance, uh, you definitely need to get signed up for that. They've had a bunch of, um, I still haven't been able to get my access. I've requested it a few times and they've had some, it's rolled out maybe a month or two ago. Um, but definitely you want to get on there so you can see your numbers. They publish that for free. You can look at it anytime. You can set up different ways of, of evaluating it. Um, as far as as far as um, other metrics across the industry, I mean, you can pay for spends. You can you can look at Nielsen. Um, we've had some brands use uh, Bizer uh, before, which is Nielsen data. Um, you know, spends if you're just doing a one time pull, uh, they, they can they can work with you on some discounts. You have to kind of push them a little bit. Um, retailers have access to spends, so like if you have a retailer friend who is willing to like let you take a look that could be a way to to get a glance at it um they're not i don't think really supposed to do that but uh but that's that's something i've seen before um and then i would say you know free or low cost resources like the community um you know here or other other forums um will often ask uh for data uh to to compare against um and that's probably the biggest the biggest stuff again the local foraging team at whole foods can give you some context around that too if you my, my advice is really try and build a relationship with your local uh team member they are uh really great people uh in in all cases and and will take the time typically with brands they're interested in to help share uh some detail around uh performance expectations that's awesome. I also shared a couple of links. There's a link to Visor, which is Nielsen's platform. You actually can get, I think, two or three free reports. Um, I'm not sure if they cover holders or not, but check that out. And I'm also going to put in a link to um, a free dashboard that you can actually see your Unify, Kehi, and Whole Food sales together on one dashboard. Uh, it's through our partner Glimpse, and it's completely free. And so definitely go and sign up for, for that today. Yep. Good stuff. Um, awesome. And then, James, I know you also talked through, like, if brands are looking to expand to other regions, were there things that that the Whole Foods team is, team is looking for? <clears throat> yeah. These things or anything else? Yeah, I would say, you know, the number one thing that you can do to help your chances of expanding into another region, in addition, of course, to your velocity numbers, is look at the brands that are on shelf in other regions. You know, really, you know, you know buyers are... They're busy people. They're they're gonna know their brands, but they're not in every store all the time. And I think it's I think it's helpful to literally go to some of the stores in the region that you're targeting, or or have someone go to some of those stores that you know. Take pictures of the set. Look to see what's there. Look to see what it's selling for. Um, and you know, in your submissions uh, to buyers, it doesn't hurt to say. You know, I've I was looking at your shelves in uh, Northern California, and it looks like you have um, you have a lot of SKUs of this one brand, and we're you know we're a dollar less than them, and we add some new innovation to the set. Uh, just thought that could be that could that could be a space that we play well in. So if you have some some vision to share with the buyers, um, you know, the category merchants and, and global and the local teams, that I think that's always uh, a welcome idea. But really, I mean, it is a numbers game. It's it's definitely, it's a numbers game of velocity. And then it's also about connecting with these people. So, you know, if you're at the events, if they're sampling your brand in person, they're thinking about it again, you're doing the submissions on time, you're following through with, um, with promotions uh, and ideally demos to drive velocity. If they see you doing all those things, that's that that makes for the best 
you know, I think overall opportunity for expansion. Um, Perfect. That was so, so great, James. James and Beth, thanks so much for walking through this. I want to open it up to questions from the audience as well. There's obviously a lot to cover. So if you have something specific, I definitely want to invite you to come up and ask. Um, I will say, who's it? Kelsey, do you want to come up and ask your question on, on Amazon sales data? You can unmute yourself and ask that directly. Yeah, I was just curious whether the category managers got access to um, Amazon sales data and whether they were using that in their decision making. Um, yeah. It's a good question. And um, I, I think they certainly have access to it. I can tell you, like, in some of the exclusive brands products that we do, like, we have the contracts for uh, a lot of the specialty flowers and beans and lentils. And we've done a lot of forecasting with the global team on velocity numbers for the Whole Foods 365 products through Amazon. Uh, so I know there's some some sharing of information, uh, especially with products that are being sold through their, their network of companies, but I've never heard a category merchant or a local forager expressly talk about using Amazon data as part of their decision-making. Um, again, I could be wrong. It could be something that we're not we're not aware of, but I've never, I've never heard it mentioned. Perfect. Thanks. And anyone else, if you have a question, um, you can just type in question into the chat and I'll invite you up, or you can use the hand raised icon um, and jump in. We did, Drew did make a comment asking uh, the category review calendars in the portal are only PDFs. Is there an Excel version that you can find or can you send that out? You know what, what we, um, <laughs> one of the neat things that I'm really proud of uh, that we've done, uh, just our company, we've, we're designed to partner with our brands. So we don't look at this, like we have all this data, like category reviews and we use it and you don't know about it. We're pretty like transparent with this stuff with our brand partners, but we've also built a platform called Harvest Hub that puts together a master category review calendar of every retailer, at least that we can get them from and amalgamates that all into a category review calendar that, that we can provide as a downloaded uh, Excel version. So that would certainly have the Whole Foods category reviews, but it has some 150, 200 other retailers nationwide as well. That's awesome. But that's, one, that's one thing to chime in on that, James, is, and that's interesting, Drew. Um, I don't know if, because uh, I, I don't have access to the new portal yet, but the uh, Excel file, it, it downloads as an Excel file from the old supplier portal. So I don't know if that's maybe something they've changed. Um, and so, James, maybe, I, I don't know if you've seen in that, but again, that, that new supplier portal is brand new. So I don't know, Drew, if you're discussing, if that's the one that you're talking about. Um, Everyone that I have done um, has been, it downloads as an Excel um, file. I think, I think on this new one, if you go to actually the the submission, uh, submit items, and then, uh, yeah, I know that it was, it, this, is, uh, this is a little funky right here, but I, I actually, clicked on this earlier today and it downloaded it downloaded the um the old excel uh, file so uh, uh, around somewhere in there yeah this is this is brand new just like a day or two old so um yeah. i haven't gone through in a ton of detail yet but i thought it was downloading the um let's try this one more time there just might be a glitch on there right now or something yeah <laughs> like it should be, be downloading um, okay. Yeah, we can. Yeah, take a look through through the portal so you can find that. Grace has a question. Grace, do you want to come on video and off mute? And you can ask your question. Yes. Hi everyone. Thank you. Hey Grace. Um, hi. How are you? Stellar. How are you? Couldn't be better. Um, <laughs> so I have I kind of a broader question. So yep. we are a direct supplier with Whole Foods. We don't use any distributors. Um, but the sort of growing pain is that we're now in like over half of the mid-Atlantic region, which is a lot of stores to self-manage um, from the POs, de delivery, demoing, 
um, merchandising. And so was wondering if you guys had any words of advice as far as staying relevant, um, excess of running promotions, which we haven't had to slash needed to run a, a promotion in any of our stores, but um, the goal is to, of course, do that eventually. Um, but as far as making sure that each store or like our 80-20 rule is really working, do you have any advice for us direct suppliers? Yeah, I think, um, and congratulations on that. I mean, it's um, a, it's nice when you can get some direct business uh, and get that extra distributor margin on your side and, and not give it away. Um, so I think, I mean, a lot of the principles are still going to be the same. I mean, obviously you're managing some different things than if you're working through distribution. Um, are you delivering yourself uh, personally or do you, um, are you, do you ship to stores or how does that work? Uh, it's a mix of both. It's mostly small parcel um, and okay. we'll self-deliver like literally in our cars um, for some of our small stores. And then if we're demoing, we'll typically bring orders if we the travel some for that. Yeah. What I recommend, yeah, and I like this strategy for a lot of accounts, not just Whole Foods, but it works well with Whole Foods, especially if you're a direct supplier, is include in your shipments some extra product that's specific for the Whole Foods staff to try and use. Because not only are you then giving them some product for them to educate themselves and have a personal connection with your brand so they can talk to people about it, but uh, as we know from Whole Foods now mandating that you have to give 20% uh, discount to store level folks, they are also shopping in stores and that counts towards your velocity numbers. So since you're delivering direct and shipping direct to stores, you can do that a lot easier than, um, than a distributor would. So that would be my advice first. It's a low cost way, relatively speaking, of getting uh, your product out there, getting it sampled by people who are going to be consumers, but also people who are going to be educating consumers uh, in the stores. And so, you know, put a little note in there with some extra product. Hey, this is for the team at store to share and take home. We really love your store. Thank you so much for supporting our brand. If there's anything I can do, uh, let me know. Um, the other thing, uh, we've seen some neat AI tools coming out lately. Um, there's one uh, called uh, Treater um, that, that we're running with one of our brands where they monitor everything from like, weather right like if you're a cold case beverage and there's a, a heat dome that's going to happen across the mid-atlantic forecast two weeks out this can like draw in that and email out to the store level people to say hey just a just a reminder that it's going to be super hot next week and um, if you want we're ready to double your order uh, assuming you're probably going to blow through a lot of a lot of our product you know so you can do that on your own too. You can interact with the store level staff and kind of give them heads up like, hey, I'm going to be doing a demo in a month. Would you mind, you know, placing a slightly larger order so that we can sell through that product? Um, that kind of like attention to detail, whether it's you or whether it's one of these AI tools or something else, um, that's going to get you ahead uh, at store level. And it's the ground game is important. I mean, this is where this is where your velocity numbers get get built up. So well. Yeah, the, the miles on the personal Lexus is hurting, but it'll be worth it. <laughs> Thanks so much, Grace, for the question. That. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Juan has a question too, saying, besides demos and quarterly promotions, are there any other marketing activations, merchandising that Whole Foods is really big on in terms of like shelf talkers, um, anything for Hispanic Heritage Month that they're doing and like a marketing person they should reach out to, what else should they be taking advantage of? Yeah, great stuff. Um, Yes, uh, all certainly all of the above. Um, on the, the coupon route, you know, one thing that we've been recommending to several of our brands is to use something like there's a company called Growflow, G R O F L O dot I O, uh, where basically you sign up, they uh, you deposit 100, 200, you know, whatever amount of dollars in your account with them, and they give you a QR code that you can be like maybe if you're doing a demo you're not on sale and you want to, if you can time your demos to be when you are on sale, because you're going to get the best results from that. But if you're not on sale, you can have a little 11 by 18 FedEx tripod banner on your table with you uh, that costs you 15 bucks with a QR code that says today only $1 off. Uh, and so the consumer with this Growflow app, there's others out there, but I like Growflow because they have some pretty low cost options. Consumer can scan that scan the receipt showing that they bought your product and then Growflow Venmos or PayPal's them a dollar. 
So it's basically a way for you to operate a store level promo. Um, you can print out coupons for people to take with you. The other nice thing about that is it gives you their name and email address uh, because they have to enter that in to redeem their coupons. So all of a sudden now you're also getting the information of your actual consumers from a retail shopping environment, which has always been kind of the, the holy grail in a lot of ways. So now you can do direct marketing to those people. So I think that's that's an effective tool um, for what it is. Uh, Whole Foods doesn't really do shelf talkers, uh, but if you are a local brand, there are lots of local marketing uh, features that you can have. You'll have to, most of the time you'll have to ask for it. Sometimes they'll reach out and offer it. Um, same thing during the seasonal programs. Uh, I really think that seasonal is a is an overlooked, underutilized tool for getting into Whole Foods and lots of retailers. They have a whole separate seasonal review. So if you have a peppermint flavored item or a pumpkin you know, chapstick or anything that can be a Q1, back to school, summer, grilling, 4th of July, Q4, Hanukkah, Thanksgiving, Christmas um, themed item, you can submit in under their seasonal um, programs. And those are nice because you're not doing free fills. They place an order with you for the amount that they're gonna sell through. Now, if it doesn't sell through, you have to agree to do some discounts you know, obviously pumpkin stuff doesn't sell as well come January. Uh, so you have to agree to that, but so look over the orders to make sure it seems like a reasonable quantity, but there's separate displays uh, for those uh, that you'll get some extra attention to. Awesome. Love that. And drop those links to Growflow. And there's another called go the aisle that's in the show notes as well. Drew, do you want to come up and ask your question? Yes, thank you so much. And then um, one I thing I'll just say, Drew, we're all at times where anyone has to drop off, um, definitely understand. Uh, we'll take this as our last question though. Okay, awesome. I hope this okay. is helpful for the group, um, but also like a little more specific on um, our brand. So basically we're, we're a nutrition bar brand. We make fiber bars. Um, and I know that the nutrition bar category review starts tomorrow. So I, but we have had conversations before with the Whole Foods team. We have emailed them. They have seen our materials. We were able to pitch them before. Um, mm -hmm. So what would you recommend for a brand like us where we're not in Whole Foods, we'd like to be um, at this stage in the game? Should we wait until next year? Should we you know, go ahead and uh, start working on an application since we do have a little bit of groundwork with us? Or what would you think? Yes, absolutely. Submit it. Gabe, is um, he's, he's a good buyer. Uh, he was with the Midwest team for a long time before he moved in to be the, uh, the bar uh, category manager. Um, and we get... We get to see him at lots of the shows. I uh, just saw him a couple of weeks ago at um, uh, at Newtopia, and I think you know in your category, you know it's it's competitive, right? So you have to you, there's you have to kind of do everything right. It's it's one of these categories where your price has to be good, um, you know the flavor has to be there. You have to be able to run some promotions. Um, you have to have some innovation. You have to have clean ingredients, all that stuff. So, but absolutely submit. You know, get it in. Um, you know, they, the worst thing that they're going to do is ignore it, or I shouldn't say ignore it, but not respond or uh, send you a, hey, sorry, but we we're not going to move forward with it this year, but absolutely put it together because then you can also share it with your, um, which, which region did you say, where are you based out of? Northeast, New York. Northeast. Okay. So, you know, Holly Long, uh, John Lawson, you know, those, those folks, um, depending on exactly where you can share it with them and they'll give you feedback on, like they should. Uh, give you feedback on it so okay awesome thank you so much yeah yeah and I'm, i bet gabe will look at samples too i mean whenever i've shared you know we have um we don't do competing brands in our agency so we have we have a, a protein uh bar that is um uh multi-region and whole foods i think we're in five or six regions and we have like a granola bar line that's a little bit different that he handles and then we have like a um a superfood cleanse bar uh you know and and you know, our cleanse bar is kind of expensive and he, but he tried all the flavors with us at Expo West this year. He gave some great feedback. Um, so he's, he's a good resource. He's been there a long time. Uh, so yeah, I would definitely submit and offer to send in samples and, and send in your note, just say, look, even if, even if we, um, you know, obviously our goal is to be a whole foods partner. And if we can do that this year in some way, that's great. If not, you know, certainly welcome hearing feedback whenever you have time. I know that you're busy, but maybe in a couple months we can connect it briefly and, and hear your thoughts and I'd really welcome them. You know, definitely like put that, that open uh, door out there. Okay. Awesome. Got a plan then. Thank you. Good luck.
Great advice, James. Too. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for everyone who stayed to the end. James, Beth, thanks so much for these great insights and for our audience in asking really great questions. I think this is stuff that's obviously top of mind and want to make sure that you have everything that you need to um, continue building your brand. So one thing I love about James and Beth is they are truly here to kind of give back. So if there's any questions that you have, if you have more specifics on like what it takes to get into Whole Foods, if you're currently there, how you can expand, um, James and his team are happy to help you on that journey. Um, and then I'll include in the, in the recap that we send out both the recording of this and along with uh, his contact information um, if you want to get in touch. Thanks so much, everyone. Best of luck uh, this week. and. Um, let me know if there's anything else. Check out our website at foodbevy.com. And we have a lot of other events coming up. They're also going to be very valuable. Bye, everyone.